Okay, so uh, we've moved on to uh, the next cylinder now. You can see this is the one we did earlier, so uh, I'm just offsetting. I've already bored number three once, so I'm just setting up with the second offset, which is what I've got going on now. So uh, what we'll do is we'll take those out, we'll put the uh, next cutter size in, and we'll get underway. Okay, so that's the first two holes done. That's cylinder number four. And if we have a look at that one, we'll see that's nicely centered on that one. Number three, that's not too bad on that one. Over the center. And number two, we'll see, if you look closely, that's in that direction. So we don't actually need to offset that any further. In fact, I'll take some measurements across the middle and see where we're going to end up. And likewise with this one, that one might only need one offset. So it's not normal to have the same offset on every cylinder. So when you want to match a gasket, you've got to do, you know, start somewhere, machine the block, make them line up, make the holes line up, and then machine to suit. Okay, so I've had a measure here with the vernier and here and obviously here, and uh, we've got about 136 thou thickness there. Um, we're going to end up with it be about 127, 128 there when we're bored, and this one is going to be about 134, something like that. So they're pretty even, but I've maximised the space, so there's a good 10 thou more across the middle there than there was before, um, but I can't go any more than that because the spacing... Uh, won't match the gasket so in terms of where we are um, these two cylinders are going to get bored straight down where they are uh, whereas these two have been offset in that direction so uh, that's my final thought on that so uh, without further ado I need to get boring so that's bore number one being done and this one's with no offset so it's going straight down Okay, so that's the last hole done. I've just cut the chamfer on it. Let's get the boring machine off and see what they look like. So, how does our gasket look now? So if you have a look, the gasket fits over our holes nicely. All the threads. So if we look at cylinder number four, cylinder number three, and there's the, the all important center. And you can see the centre of that gasket is nice and thin, but the centre of the block has actually about the same width, this, width as the gasket now. Cylinder number two. Cylinder number one. And that's a 1380. So that all lines up just about as good as we can get it. Now with that particular gasket, which is a genuine original gasket, um, on this block, I like to move this cylinder... 10 thou, well in fact 11 thou that way, this one 11 thou that way, but this one and this one never moved at all and that's because the factory tolerances, these two were already offset in the right position and, that, and that's not the same for every block, so when you do these you have to check every block and bore to suit, so it's not the same offset on every one. So what does that actually look like? As we can see now, they're pretty much the same thickness. So we've actually got 135 thou thick there. We've got 135 thou thick there. And here we've got 127 and a half. So what we've actually done is, is, is you know, evened out the spacing inappropriate uh, with the gasket. So 
you know, there's there's adequate material across all those and they're all nicely centered uh, in the gasket. So that's about as good as you can get for a 1380. Uh, and that's how I do them. Of course, big ball blocks are not the only block that needs to get uh, uh, the offset boring treatment. So uh, if I'm going from a standard bore to say plus 60, uh, I'll also do the same activity on the small bore blocks. And here's a nine and eight block, which I've uh, offset board. Um, and the difference here is the centre two cylinders have moved in towards each other and the outer cylinders have moved, uh, that cylinders one and four, have moved outwards. And the reason for this is to ensure that it lines up with the gasket. Here you can see I've uh, used a pay-in gasket and I've fitted it on the cylinder bores. And if you look uh, closely, that's number four. Number three, all nicely centred. Number two nicely centered and number one is nicely centered so if you are planning on boring your block it's always a good idea to think about uh, checking the um, position uh, of of the gasket on the block and obviously the holes in relation to it and correcting as required one of the things that you really want to um, think about investing in if you're doing large overballs is uh sonic testers so here's a couple of cheap ones um well relatively cheap uh, they've certainly come down a lot in price uh, over the years uh, and i use these for um uh, mapping my ball wall thicknesses to see where the uh, you know where the meat is for example um and where the pockets are and where the casting's thin or thick or um you know and, and it basically helps me select a casting that's able to go to the bore the overbore that size that i want so uh nice and simple to use uh, i've got a couple of test pieces there you need some um uh, ultrasound gel the mating of the sensor and you just put it on the, the thickness that you want to measure and then it will give you the rough thickness um and when the light when the dot comes up that's roughly where you are so let that stabilize that's about where it needs to be that's a one mil thick piece of plate and if i take that off and put it on the uh the thicker piece i've got there we can see that's a four mil test piece so that's 3.9 so accuracy wise they're pretty good they're not you know these are not perfect um, but they are more than good enough. I've got another example here. So let's just do the same test. So put that sensor down, see what that one reads. Now it's about the same 0.91 mil. And then move over to the uh, thicker piece. And we've got 4.1. So as I say, slightly different reading between there. If I calibrate them up, um, they will read pretty close. Uh, but that's good enough for normal work that you want to do with boring. I say, I use these when perhaps I'm looking at, say, like an 850 block and I want to give it an eighth of an inch overbore. So I might go for a few, a few, a few blocks um, to map the thickness of the cylinder walls, uh, and that will help me make a, a, a choice to be able to um, get a successful bore without wasting my time and uh, finding fresh air. Okay. I hope you found that useful. Uh, that's some of the things I go through when I'm doing my uh, block rebores and offset boring and trying to find bigger bores. Now, particularly of interest there was the um, uh, use of the sonic testing. Now, uh, one of the things that, are, that greatly enhanced the success of my boring was to uh, start using sonic testers. Um, and it does sometimes mean that you need to go through your blocks because uh, some blocks have um, typically got thicker cylinder walls um, than others uh, due to production tolerances um, also you'll notice that uh, cylinder walls on a series tend to get thinner uh, as you go up from the bottom of the block towards the top so two thirds to three quarters of the way up you normally find the thinnest section which is right where you don't want it because that's where the cylinder pressure starts to be at the highest so uh, it is very important to be able to uh, think about uh, maximizing your ball wall thickness um to be able to uh you know get a reliable bore so um looking at bore wall thicknesses i like about 200 thou uh, some people will go down to about 160 you know um i wouldn't go any less than that so the thicker the better really uh, in cylinder bores you'll also find that uh, blocks like the a plus 1275 uh you'll have over 300 thou wall thickness to start with which is which is very good so that they're very thick you'll also find that some of the older blocks 
uh, I've got thinner cylinder walls. Um, so, you know, in reality, uh, I wouldn't start assuming anything. A lot of people with minis assume, oh, you know, because so-and-so said that or that was written in a book, then they're all the same. That's not the case. Um, because these things were mass produced, uh, tolerances vary a lot. Uh, so the best way I've found to do that is to get yourself a sonic tester and actually measure what you've got. Uh, you'll also find things like core shift where the uh, bores are thinner on one side than the other. Um, and you'll also, uh, you know, which, which you might think you can change with offsetting, but you're offsetting so small that you won't get there. So your offset on the core shift will be much more than the offset when you're boring. So I would strongly suggest that you uh, invest in a sonic tester and start looking at the blocks. Uh, you'll also notice that not all blocks will go to the um, aforementioned oversizes that you want, like eighth of an inch or even... Uh, I've even had a uh, 1275A plus block um, fail into the oil way on number four at only 20 thou rebore. So, uh, you know, nothing's taken for granted with these old engines. You need to measure stuff. The other thing that happens over the course of the uh, life of the engine is, of course, corrosion. So uh, sonic testing really comes into its own. So you can uh, measure cylinder wall thickness where, the, where there's been corrosion. You can also measure deck thicknesses and things like that. So, so uh the Sonic Tester is an excellent piece of kit. It's not only uh, can be used on cast iron, but uh, it can be used on many materials and obviously aluminium, so it can be used on other engines. So uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're great pieces of kit. They're not massively expensive. Uh, you know, they're not thou accurate, um, you know, more like I, I would say down to sort of five thou, but that's, uh, that's more than enough to give you an indication, which is effectively what you're trying to do with this tool. Uh, so yeah thoroughly recommend that you you get yourself one of those is is it if you're into boring or wanting bores uh large over bores on blocks um especially uh older engines and uh, even if you're doing v8s uh, american v8s and things like that you need to understand the ball wall thicknesses because those engines have got uh some of those american v8 engines have got quite thin bores so or ball wall thicknesses to keep the weight down um, they're not like some of the older English engines, which are, uh, you know, you can take an eighth of an inch out of the cylinder and, and you'll still be fine. But uh, in reality, um, measurement is key. Anyway, hopefully you found that series useful. Um, as ever, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.